Yes, sir. I want to know what the union is of the two sets. Zero, one, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine. Okay. So it's basically one instance of each of these. You don't have any duplicates in a set. So it's just a combination of the two. You can think of them as adding the two sets together. Okay. Okay. Now what I would like to know is what is the intersection of the two sets? Mr. Andrew, can I ask you, sir, what is uh, the intersection of these two three sets? Three and five. Three and five, that's the intersection. We're good there, right? Okay, so just as a reminder, this should be a review to you. I'm gonna show you two different ways to create and initialize the sets. The first way is the shortcut way. So I'm gonna go uh, set integer. Now remember, set is an interface. That's a generic term. And on the other side, so this I'll call this set A. And on the other side, I have to specify a concrete set, set class. I'll just go with hash set um, like that, integer, uh, like that, right? And, uh, and over here, I'll just go uh, arrays dot as list. Uh, and I'll put in here uh, one, three, four, five, uh, seven, and nine. Okay. So I think that should work. Let me just make sure that works. Oh, I forgot to import import Java util star like that. Okay, so uh, this arrays as list turns this into an array list, and an array list can be used as a starting point uh, to initialize a set. Okay, so that's basically what's happening here. Now, just to show you that this is all good, I'm gonna just the whole set out here for you. Okay, there's the set, all right? The other way to, to create a set is the long way. So let's do it that way, set integer. Okay, like that, right? And then let me print that one also. Okay, so there's the two sets. Now, here's how you calculate the intersection and the union. So to calculate the intersection, you just go like this, you just go, a dot add all b like that okay so this is the union property like that okay so now and then let's print a again show you what the union will look like the union is going to be stored in a by the way and so let's print it so you can see here's a here's b and here's the union notice that there are no duplicates right Okay, so that's how you calculate a union. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to calculate an intersection. So um, let me uh, let me turn this off for a second, and uh, let's go a dot uh, retain all b, and this is the inter intersection intersection like that okay so what that does is that calculates the intersection between the two let's try that and you can see the intersection as uh i forget uh, mr Choi had told us you can see three and five are common to both sets like that we're good there right okay now here's the complication the Java libraries know how to do add all and how to do retain when the numbers in here represent some standard uh, library class. In this case, capital integer, it also knows how to do it for capital double, obviously. But what happens when the set is storing objects of a type that you create? Like, let's say I had a set of dogs. Would it know how to do this? No. The answer is, oh, yeah. The answer is it wouldn't know how to calculate the intersection of the union, but we can add some code to our class, which allows then for uh, the uh, virtual uh, Java virtual machine to be able to use these methods like always. Now, another thing really important to remember, this add all and this retain all, these are not set operations. These are collections operations. That means that these two operations will not only work on sets, which obviously implements the collections interface, but they will also work on array lists because array lists also implement the collections interface, okay? 
And what that means, by the way, is that this problem, this problem here, can be solved using sets, but it can also be solved using array lists. But I would like you to solve it using sets because I want this to be a refresher for the whole data structures theme for this year, okay? So even though this problem can be solved using array lists, I would like you to solve it using sets. All right? Okay. Back to back to work. Okay. So now the question is what do we need to add to our code here in the point class so that when we do these operations like retain all or add all let's talk about retain the intersection how will the java virtual machine know to be able to take an intersection of two sets i thought i heard the little thing go off again that's right mr jane the the add all would end up containing duplicates that's true uh so we're, we're only going to be using the retain all feature, though, for this particular uh, problem, Mr. Jane. So we won't be using the at all. OK. All right. So it turns out that in order to be able to call the retain all method, the retain all method. Yes, sir. Very good, sir. So the retain all me method actually uses another method calls this thing use, let me write it down for you here. Retain all uses dot contains. And dot contains uses another method that Mr. Stops has just mentioned, which uses, actually uses potentially two different methods, potentially two methods. One is the dot equals method and or it also anybody know what the other one is there's two ways to tell if two objects are the same one is to do the call the dot equals yes uh no it actually uses something called the hash code so one of the ways you can tell if two objects are the same is you call the hash code function on each one and compare the hash codes and if they're the same you say the objects are the same and you don't know which one is you're going to need, but there's actually an, a, 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 a rule in Java that if you override one of these, you should always override the other. Now, strangely, that rule is not enforced by the compiler, but you just have to know as a programmer that if you override the equals method, that you should rewrite the hash code method also. Okay, that's just like a really good thing to do. In fact, it's, a, it's what they call a contract in Java. That's, that basically means you're not going to be, the compiler won't hold you to it, but you, you really have to do it. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go back to our point class and we're going to re override the equals and the hash code methods so that we'll be able to take an intersection of sets on points. We got that instead of on just regular integers like we did before. So let's go over to the point class. And I would like you guys to rewrite the dot equals method. So I'm going to go at override, uh, override public boolean equals. Now, a lot of times we write the equals method, we would go like this. We go point other like that. But here, we want to make sure that the, the signature of this equals method matches the signature in the library's generic equals method. So instead of point here, what should I put here? Mr. Lebedev, any idea, sir? Instead of putting point here, if I want to use the generic, if I want to override the generic library equals method, what would I put there? Object. Okay, so we will put object here like that, all right? And what we're going to do here is we're going to write a little bit of code that says this point and this other point are the same if, now you write the equals method for me. Mr. Whalen, are you there, sir? I'm here. Okay, sir, we're working on trying to write this equals method for this uh, point class. It's a very rudimentary class, sir. How would you write the equals method, sir? First, I would check if the object is a point. Uh, okay. Uh, that's probably a very safe, good thing to do. 
And uh, let's do that since you mentioned it. I, I, I wasn't even going to bother, but you know what? That's a really good thing to do. Okay. So I'm going to say if object, what should I put in here, sir? Other. Um, this, I'm actually a little, I don't know the exact way you do this. I've done it before, but I can't other, remember off the top of sorry. my head. Okay. Instance of. Point. Yes. Okay. Then we want to do some stuff. And if we get down here, we'll just return false because this is not even a point. So it's obviously not the same. So now in here, what should we put in there, Mr. Uh, Whalen? If other let me let me get you, let me get you started um we'll go uh uh point b equals point other so the first thing i'm going to do sir is i'm going to cast the other thing and turn it into a point I, this is safe to do here why because i already checked to make sure it really was a point okay i checked to make sure it really was a point like right? now, now over here now I need to write some code to make sure that the, the two points match. Go ahead, Mr. Whalen. If this dot x equals p dot x or p dot get x. I can use p dot get x. Sir, do you think it would be okay to do p dot x? I don't remember whether or not the so x and y variables are public or private the point class do you see we're in the point class yep inside the point class we have a right to access our variables okay okay so but 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 get x would not be wrong here that would not be wrong okay i go ahead sir and this dot y equals p dot y like that all right let's just leave that like that okay and the other thing we have to do is we have to override the hash code. So let's do that. Um, by the way, over the weekend, I actually tried this without overriding the hash code because I didn't really think it was necessary. And believe it or not, it, it wouldn't work without overriding the hash code. So that was a surprise. Uh, it hash code. And um, yeah, I did a little research on this. You basically want to create some sort of unique hash code based on these two values. And initially, I had done something like uh, return like a thousand times x plus y, or some goofy little hash code I came up with. Like I said, it worked fine, but it turns out that there's a more official one, and I'm just going to share this with you. It's just a good one to know or have in your bailiwick here. So it's going to be int hash equals 23, and it's going to say uh, hash equals hash times 31 plus this dot x and then it's going to say hash equals hash times 31 plus this dot y return hash like that okay now i'm not going to get into all the specifics of how this works but let me just point out a few highlights of this what do you notice about 23 and 31 what strikes you as uh, their prime numbers see that now, this hash code is not guaranteed to be collision free. It's not, but it's pretty damn good. And the main thing you're trying to avoid with this hash code is if you have a point like this, AB, you do not want the hash code to be the same as for BA. You don't want that. And this thing will let you avoid that. Okay, that's the main thing you're going for there. And by the way, if the point coordinates had three points in here, can anyone guess what I would do over here? It's just what you're thinking. It's hash equals hash times 31 plus this Z like that. That's all you would have to do. So you can add in all the key features of your, of your integers here to build a hash code. So it's kind of nice. Okay, so, uh, but we only have a two dimensional case here, so. We don't have to worry about that. Okay, so that there you go. So now, believe it or not, that's all the code you need for your point class. Um, our demo here. We had previously set up the demo to use single integers in the sets, and we had demonstrated how we can calculate the union and the intersection 
of points in a, a set of integers. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to change this set to point to points here like this. And over here, this will also be point. And I'm going to add some points here. Uh, so let's go um, new point. Um, and I'll go set over here, and, which has the three, five, the two, four, and the zero, zero. And I've got this other set, which has the two, four, the one, two, three, four, zero, zero, minus five. So hopefully you can see that the intersection of these two is the two, four, and the zero, zero. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to print the first set of points. Then I'm going to print the second set of points. And then we're going to calculate the intersection and print the intersection, OK? All right, so let's compile and run this. And you can see here is the first set. Here's the second set. And you can see we can calculate the intersection now. Some of you might be wondering, do we really need this hash code thing? And it turns out I was playing around with this over the weekend, and sometimes it works without the hash code, and sometimes it doesn't. Um, for this particular problem using sets, if you were to not implement this hash code override, I think it comes up with the wrong answer. Let me show you that. So you can see it comes up with the wrong answer. So here you can see the hash code function really is needed on the face of it you may not you might not understand why it's needed you might think that just the dot equals is needed but there's a contract in java that says if you override either one of these you should override the other actually specifically it says if you override the equals you should also provide the uh, the hash code function anyway it's safe to provide it so we're going to do that here okay so you can use this code as is to help you solve this last place you look problem, it's not cheating. And you can use the equals method and the hash code I've provided to you, okay? All right.